Hello friends, welcome to my channel and uh, it's a very interesting topic that I'm going to discuss today. So I was stressed somewhere around early 2020 when few uh, stocks in my portfolio were not performing as per the other benchmark. So they were not growing at 20% or uh, more than 20% and I was flipping out, hey, what's happening with my money? This is my dear hard earned money and it's not growing at the rate at, uh, at which of course I would want or I would wish to. So hi, welcome to my channel. If you're new to my channel, in this uh, on this channel, I share a lot of free personal wealth and finance and career and consulting videos, absolutely free of course. So feel free to hit on the subscribe and like button so that you get notified every time I'm sharing these free hacks so that you get to have a decent, wealthy, happy and uh, happy, ha happy, healthy and a wealthy life. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing a very advanced topic, advanced because on my channel, I have discussed why savings are important and how should you save? How should you create that accounting sheet so that every time you are making an expense, it becomes really easy so that even though you are lazing around, you should be able to have an accounting ledger. And then in one video, I talked about the importance of investing, why you need to invest to actually uh, break the inflation so that your money is not getting uh, consumed by the inflation that's happening. And in this video, we are going to be discussing a very important topic, which is mutual funds. And I do understand that not a lot of us really understand mutual funds. Nobody taught us, right? And we have been just left uh, by ourselves to understand what is really mutual funds. So let me help you understand the concept of mutual fund. Uh, you may know the mo model of OYO, right? OYO rooms, you may know the model of Amazon, you may know the model of Ola. What is the commonality? The commonality is all three of them are agents, all three of them are aggregators. Ola, more likely than not, Ola will not have its own cars. Ola will work with other travel, uh, with other cab agencies and then it's an aggregator. Ola is not actually a cab company. Ola is largely an app company, right? It has its own really cool app. Similarly with Oyo, Oyo does not own largely, I know they have their Oyo premium brand as well, but largely the hotels that are actually featured on Oyo website, they do not own them. Oyo is largely a tech company. And similarly with Amazon, uh, more, more than 80 percentage of the inventory on their website does not belong to Amazon. Why am I bringing these three examples to you? Because all three, these all these three examples are actually examples of agents, third parties who do not actually own the inventory, who do not actually own the supply, but they are actually helping you create a portfolio, create a database so that you can choose and pick. That's the closest example that I can think when I think of mutual funds, right? So mutual funds is a very similar example and a very similar, I would say, analogy. So typically the struggle of a new or a rookie investor is which stock to purchase, how much should I purchase, in what proportion should I purchase? I have 10,000 rupees Shatakshi that I can afford to put it in the market, but I don't know which stocks to pick. And even if I know which stocks to pick, I do not know should I do 5,000 in HUL or 5,000 in PNGD or I, should I do 2, 2,000 each for five stocks, right? And those are legitimate concerns. And one Buffett mentions that um, it is People invest in stocks and pick stocks because they can. People invest stocks because they can and largely they should not be picking stocks. And I have been bitten by that problem. Uh, because of my previous experiences, worked with BCG, went to ISB, I always thought that I am intelligent enough to pick stocks. And uh, I would be honest, 70% of my portfolio has actually given me a growth rate of 20%, but 30% of my portfolio has actually bitten me as well, right? And because of that, I realized that I am a full-time entrepreneur. I'm not an investor. I'm not a trader. And by the way, uh, you should check out Nikhil Kamal's post. And uh, I follow what he, that, that guy says, largely makes sense that traders actually in the long term don't make money. They make money, they lose money and net net, uh, they largely don't make money. But coming back to the uh, point, I assume that you're a working professional. I assume that probably you're an entrepreneur or I assume that you're a current student, right? You do not have the time and energy to figure out the best answers for your money, what mathematical equation and what should be the right ratio and what should be the right stocks. And that's when mutual fund managers come in handy. So large banks like ICICI and there are many fund managers and many fund organization which help you handle that decision, right? They would say that, okay, Shatakshi, I would manage your money. Why don't 
don't you give me 10,000 rupees and I would allocate some money in HDFC, some money in TCS, some money in PNG, etc. I have my own portfolio through which I would help you get the best rate uh, of returns in the market and you chill and relax. So that is what the role of a typical mutual fund uh, uh, managers and houses are. Now, of course, if you go on internet, you will be able to do basic research. I mean, uh, the best skill for which I hire at GJ is Google search. Do you know how to find your answers? So this should be a skill that you should acquire how to find your own answers, right? So go on internet and you will be able to find good mutual fund managers and houses. By the way, this is not a promoted video and I will also talk about the downsides of mutual funds in this video. And you will be able to see the kind of historical rate of returns that these mutual fund owners and, um, have been able to give. And of course, within mutual fund, there is no just right, right answer. Few are completely equity mutual fund uh, assets, right? They would say that we, uh, Shatakshi, if you give us 10,000 rupees, we are going to put entirety of that in the stock market, the equity market, right? And few mutual fund owners will say that we are going to put it completely in the debt market or the bond market. The bond market is the one in which the government operates in the government borrows money, pays gives you back and the government uses that money for its own expenditure if you don't know what are bonds i made a series on bond market feel free to actually check that out on my channel so that you are well aware how the macroeconomics work and how can that impact your microeconomics and your personal finance but coming back there is a third category where a mutual fund owner or a house would say that we have a hybrid model 50 or 40 percentage could be equity and 60 to 40 percentage could largely be debt and that is how my friends, they actually help you get the best rate of returns. But there is a catch, right? Somebody is working for you. So they would, of course, take a commission, right? Amazon takes a commission, OU takes a commission, Groupon nearby takes a commission. That's where I used to work. That was my first job and so on and so forth. So you get the gist, right? And it typically ranges between 0.2 to point uh, i would say 2.5 to 3 percentage and even though you may be like shatashi that's minuscule amount right i will give that money eventually to someone uh, to manage my money so that i can sleep peacefully but trust me when you look at a long term horizon like 5 to 10 years and uh, when the base is decent like 10 lakhs you may be able to lose somewhere around uh, 5 to 10 lakhs just because you thought that number the expense ratio that you incur that's your expense and that's the commission for the mutual uh, mutual fund owner uh, which will be the salary for them. They take salary because they're working on your behalf and they have multiple expenses. So that brings me to the interesting question, Shatakshi, I understand why investing is required. I saw your video on investing and on savings. I understand what is mutual fund. Why do they exist so that I am not taking that fatigued decisions because I am not an expert, right? And I am a full-time student or a working professional. Then the question is, should you invest in the mutual funds? So my answer actually will be very interestingly no and i know i know you must be thinking but actually why did you make this video i do not advocate mutual funds 90 percentage of the mutual funds i advocate index funds which are actually a subset of mutual funds what are index funds so for example nifty 50 is an index in india s p 500 is an index in india you basically if you have 10,000 rupees you put your money in nifty 50 so nifty 50 is basically a proxy for how is the market performing right the top 50 indexes reliance tcs uh, of the world that is where you're putting your money and largely the benefit is the risk is less right because as in you want to make sure that you beat inflation right that's the primary objective you have we are not very greedy we want to reduce our bottom line remember in one of the videos i said that becoming richer is not a function of top line it's your bottom line so with mutual mutual fund you want to make sure that at least your bottom line is taken care of right with index fund their expense ratios are almost negligible on the sides of 0.1 to 0.2 percentage and once again you should do your own research this is not a promoted video i put my money in index funds myself i have an sip where a percentage of my income every month peacefully goes to the index fund. I'm not going to touch that money for the next 20 years. And I know that a lot of people advocate investing in stocks, picking their own equity. It may work for them. It may not work for them. But for me, I'm very sure that I am a full-time entrepreneur first and then I'm a trader. And even with as a trader, largely historical information shows that uh, 
they do not make actually a lot of money in the long term and that is very interestingly a very beautiful sweet spot that uh, most of the it more than 80 percentage of the mutual fund managers are not actually able to beat the index fund which is such an interesting insight and um, there is this actual very interesting research where a monkey and a harvard graduate and a and 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 an active investor was pick uh, was allowed to pick stocks uh, by throwing a dart on the uh, dark and the monkey eventually ended up picking better stocks how harsh is that right how um, ironical is that so many a times warren buffett says that we pick stocks because we can pick stocks it may not necessarily mean that you have to pick stocks i will put the link of my video around index funds i highly advocate it it's the best risk free and the less expensive way in which uh, you can actually make sure that your money is growing while you are putting your heart and soul to actually advance your career if you like this video feel free to give it a thumbs up and uh, uh, and subscribe to the channel it is absolutely free of course why would you not right so that whenever i am making free videos on consulting on career advancement of course on wealth management you get notified and it comes to your feed i hope you like these videos and i will see you soon take care bye